Once again, thank you so much for joining us today for this very special Monday Brief. I thank God that you are able to join us, either streaming or downloading. I mean, thank you. Thank you so much and God bless you. I keep uh, appealing to everyone who is listening to us, watching us, that this is a season unlike any other season. I can only compare it with uh, what the book of Amos speaks about in the Bible, that there will be hunger, not necessarily for food, but for the Word of God. And therefore, I appeal to you, whatever you are, help somebody with this word. Help them to subscribe to this channel so that they can continue to feed like you are doing. Let's pray for the word. Thank you so much, our God, because of your goodness, your mercies. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, the blood of our redemption. We thank you today that we are able to sit at your table and hear from you. Bless your people. Oh my God, bless your people. Expound the word to them. Speak to them. Speak to us in ways that we can understand. Only you can be able to explain your word to each one of us. In Jesus' name. I want to continue on a series that I began last Friday. But it's time to walk. And when we talk about time to walk, I will say it's time we hear the voice of God and do exactly what he is telling us to do. It's time to obey God. It's time to be very careful to hear the voice of God and just obey it. Men and women in the Bible who made history who shaped the lives of many other people, who reached their destiny, who finished their assignments, were men and women that were very, very careful to hear the voice of God, put their hands to work, do what God has told them with all due diligence. Not, I mean, their weakness is notwithstanding. Because God is our strength. Because when God speaks to us to do a certain assignment, he gives us the place, he gives us the time, and he gives us the resources for that assignment. Let me repeat. Any time God speaks to us to do something, he gives us the place, the time, and the resources to accomplish the assignment. And this is what we said on Friday, that God gives to each one of us some talents, some skills. He also tells us the place of our assignment. He plants us. And when he plants us in a place to do his assignment, I mean, the Bible says in Psalm 102, verse 14, the trees that God has planted are full of sap. They are well watered. I mean, they are full of life. They have everything that is needed to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in that place. In fact, the Bible says, and, you know, those plantings of the Lord grow like the cedars of Lebanon, over 50 meters high. What am I talking about? God gives us talents. He gives us the place where we need to do his assignment. And he also gives us the time. I mean, uh, opportunities. He opens doors. After all, the Bible says, every door God opens, nobody 
can close. And every door God closes, there's nobody who can open it. We talked about that on Friday concerning the 10 servants that were given. I'm in a minor each. We also said something that is very that was very important and is still very, very important. That is yesterday in the early morning service, we talked about this one fact that it is very, very important, just like it happened to the those servants, that we we accept his lordship. The Bible says of all the ten servants. Only two truly accepted his lordship. And they did what, you know, they started to uh, use their minors or, the, you know, what, they were, what was put in their hands. One of them was a spoiler. He said, I, I, I'm not going to be misused. I'm just going to put, you know, the miner, in, in, dig it somewhere. When he comes, he, will, he can have it if he wants it. Seven of them were bystanders. They did nothing. All because they never accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ. They said, we don't want this man ruling over us. We don't want this boss. Watch this. The church today is full of people who want his blessing but not his lordship. They want his prosperity not his lordship. They want his grace, but not his lordship. And it, th this is where we find ourselves in a great dilemma. Now, our, uh, 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 again, I said yesterday, sorry. Again, I said yesterday. It is very important to, to know that nobody is useless in the kingdom of God. We looked at that again in Matthew 25 beginning from verse 14. I mean, people are given talents according to their own abilities. We, may, we are not called to do the same thing. But at least all of us are called to do something in the kingdom of God. You may not be an apostle, but God has called you maybe to be an intercessor or just in the ministry of hospitality, which is equally very, very important, children ministry. And, or maybe just in the ushering department. All of us are equipped to do different tasks in the kingdom of God. After all, we are members of the body of Jesus Christ, and a, a body has many functions, and it has many parts, and so are we. Today, I feel to go back and remind you what we said. On Friday, yesterday morning, and then yesterday in the later service, this one thing. Once we obey, God, number one, knows why he is asking us to, do, to obey. Once he gives us an assignment, he knows why he is telling us to do that assignment. But at the same time, we said, he will always do what is right after we do the assignment. He is always true to us. He is always, always going to come in, you know, for, for our lives once we obey him. Abraham obeyed, he became the father of many nations. Listen to this. We saw yesterday in Luke 5 that after Jesus had seen two boats, you know, in the sea, he told Peter, he entered into the one of Peter, and he told Peter, Peter, uh, I want you to push it a little bit into the sea. After he had preached from that boat, he comes and tells Peter, Peter, put the now, get your nets that you are washing, uh, having closed the shop, put them in the day, you'll get something. Because 
I mean, I don't miss your people. Peter said we have done this the whole night, but because it's you who said it, we'll do it. They put in their, you know, their nets, they got so much fish, huge ones. They had to summon their, 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 um, their partners to come. Let me remind, me remind you, God knows why he is telling us to obey, to go into that ministry for, of children, to go into that ministry of intercession, to go out and witness evangelize. He knows why he's telling you to keep work, I mean, keep on with the ministry in that church, in that place. He knows why. And it's not just for his glory. He has good intentions towards you because our God will always be true to us and he will do what is right. One time Peter, Peter, Asked Jesus, I'm reading from Luke chapter 18. He asked, verse 23, oh no, sorry, 28. Peter said, we have left our homes to follow you. Jesus replied, yes, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will be repaid many times over this life and they will have eternal life in the world to come. Let me, let me go back and show you why Peter asked that question. Jesus, if you look at verse 18, had a certain young man who was a bit wealthy come to him and he asked him, Master, Lord, what should I do in order to inherit eternal life? Jesus told him, of course, you know all the commandments. You love your God with all your heart. You love your neighbors. You love yourself. This man said, I have done this from the time I was youth, I have been very, very careful to obey the law. Jesus told him, now follow this, you have been obeying the law, now obey me. Listen to this. It's one thing to have obedience to the law, it is another thing to obey Jesus, obey the Holy Spirit now. He said, I have been doing it. Okay, Jesus said, all right, that's okay. But now, you said you want eternal life. The law cannot give you eternal life. I am the one who can give you eternal life. Now I want you to obey me. Do this. Go sell everything you have. Come and follow me. Begin all over again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The boy looked at Jesus and with one glaze, he left. Why did he go? He had a lot of wealth. In other words, he was telling Jesus, Jesus, I can't do that. I cannot do that. I'm not going to follow you for nothing. I'm not just going to obey you for the sake of obeying you. Let me keep what I already have. Wait a minute. When he left, Jesus said, my, how hard it is for these rich people to enter the kingdom of God. 
it's like, I mean, it, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. That is the small door that we have at the gate, on the side or right in the gate, than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Peter said, then, who, else, who, who can be saved? I mean, uh, Jesus comes to Peter again, and Peter asks him, Jesus, that man is very wealthy. He wanted eternal life. You told him that he has been following the law and he has been following after wealth. You want him to begin from zero and follow you. How about us? How about us? We left everything to follow you. Tell us, are we following you for nothing? Do you have anything in mind for us? Because we are earthly. We have families. We have children. We have responsibilities. Surely. Are we going to follow you and end up very poor, very useless to our families. Is that the case? Because you did not force that man to follow you. And you did not call him like you called us. What's happening here? I, I, I thank God for Peter. Very honest. Very honest. And the Bible says, Peter said, I'll read again, verse 28. We have left our homes to follow you. We have left everything. And the Bible says, Jesus said, I assure you, I can guarantee you, I'll do what is right. I'll be very true to you. I'll be very fair. Very reasonable. Very, very fair, very reasonable. I assure you, you gave up your house, you left your wife, you just followed me, you left your brothers, your sisters. That does not mean you hated them. You gave me time that maybe could have been theirs and you are giving that time to me? You left everything for me and for the sake of the kingdom of God? I will assure you, you will be repaid many times. Many times over. And he said, in this life, verse 30, verse 30, in this life, and in the life to come, of course, you'll have eternal life. But in this life, did you, did you read Deuteronomy 28? And see from verse 15 that when you obey, these blessings will come and overtake you. You don't chase the blessing. You just obey. The blessings chase you after you. Jesus said it in Matthew 6, 33. You first of all seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness Whatever else is needed in this life will be added unto you. That means accelerated into your life. You may go th through some, th some things. You may go through some dry spells. But dry spells are seasonal. They are seasonal. 
The dry spells are preparations. Or may I say, dry spells are a preparation time for the rain, flood, outpouring that is in the horizon. What am I saying? Peter, you are not being told to work, to do something by God just for the sake of it. Our God will always do what is right. He will always be righteous. He will always be fair, just. He will always, always be true to you because he is the truth. He knows you live in this world. I live in this world. And he knows what you need, what I need. Listen to this. About four years ago, slightly more, I was working in Northeastern. And uh, the Lord called me, told me, I want you now to leave what you're doing. And uh, I want you to go and work for me full time. And I asked the Lord, where? Of course, he guided me very well. I resigned. And uh, I came to Machaco, started uh, some itinerant ministry from there. But while I was leaving, the Lord told me, and you have lands in Lamu. You have land in Kipini. Kipini is where Tana River, I mean, it pours into Indian Ocean. That is on the side of Tana River. I wanted to sell those lands. It's like burning bridges behind me. I did that. Started itinerant ministry. Let me make it short. The Lord gave me lands. The Lord gave me a house I never built, big one. What am I talking about? I did not obey in order to get the house or to get lands. I obeyed to please the Lord. I obeyed to make the heart of God glad. Listen to this. In return, because he is fair, he is right, you know he does, he gave me back lands and a house I never built. Watch this. Miraculously, I mean miraculously, that's a story for another day. Our God will always do what is right. That's why he says, you pray, it shall be given to you. You don't pray for nothing. You don't pray for the sake of praying. He says, if you are in sin, you repent. Not for the sake of repenting, but you will be forgiven. And I'm saying to you, if you are in sin, just repent. You'll be forgiven. And it does not matter what kind of sin, you will be forgiven. If you are not born again, you'll be born again. He is not just telling us to do things for the sake of doing them. He says, you give. Luke 6, 38. And he says, not just for the sake of giving, but he says, you give. So that God can get an opportunity to give you back full measure, pressed down, shaken together, pressed down again, I mean, he will always do what is right, what is fair, what is reasonable. Obey him. Rise up. Do the work. 
do the work of the ministry. Do what God has told you to do with all your heart. God give you the grace to rise up. God reward you richly in Jesus' name. I'll see you on Wednesday.